today on 15 on 50. Aruba hosts a TEDx event for the youth. Plus, a Texas search party continues to search for Natalie Holloway. And SeaWorld is making big changes. Thank you for joining us again on another edition of 15 on 15 right here on Channel 15 ATV with Neal Piazzi. Let's start off the show with our latest local news topics. With the success of TEDx Aruba in September this year, it has motivated a whole new community to get involved. That is the younger community of Aruba. A group of talented youngsters has come together to organize the TEDx Youth Platform. TEDx Youth 2015 is an opportunity for youngsters to think about the world in 2035 and to engage with experts who consider the corners of our intangible imagination to be foundation of our potential future reality. Speakers will touch on an array of questions about the future, and together they will seek for answers to these questions from a number of different perspectives scientific, cultural, technological, and environmental. This TEDx Youth event is organized by a group of talented youngsters from Juliana School and the Kuiwanis Builders Club. At TEDx Youth Orion Stat 2015, young people will gather for a viewing party of TEDx Youth event held in Brooklyn Museum in New York, USA. Together with more than 100 TEDx Youth events from around the world, they will explore themes about the future. The TEDx Youth Orion Stat will feature brilliant young local speakers, fun activities, three sessions live streamed from New York, and a close-off party with their own DJ. This event will take place on Saturday, November 14th at the Rio Palace Resort. For more information, you can visit their Facebook page, TEDx Youth at Orion Stat. On another note, this year Aruba will celebrate the 10th Annual Shoko Awards, which gives recognition to exemplary members of the tourism industry. And to start off the week, the organization has announced the top contenders for Employee of the Year Award. The Shoko Awards is the National Tourism Award where people working directly in the tourism industry are recognized for their excellence in service and their unique qualities and contributions to the success of Aruba's tourism industry. The award categories include Employee, Supervisor, Manager, and Tour Guide of the Year, amongst other recognitions. Here are this year's nominated to be the Employee of the Year. Natasha Waver, Wilma Benjamin, Juana Werleman, Amy Spagnola, Zuhail Hernanda Hodge, Roberta Waver, Mary Juvel Hasafakun, Alvin Anthony Oduber, Alejandra Sanchez, Andal John, Andre Mokriak, and Elba Fayardo. In other news, moving into the holiday seasons, Aruba streets and neighborhoods begin to illuminate with holiday decorations. For the past three years, the Bow Barrio Foundation has organized a decoration of Aruba's roundabouts. First off, earlier last month, the Las Americas roundabout was unveiled, and now there are two more to add to the list. Over the weekend, the Tanqui Lender and Cerro Blanco roundabouts were inaugurated surrounding the theme of Aruba's culture. In Tanqui Lender, Scouts Aruba and Subway came together to organize a flora and fauna themed traffic circle. It was filled with large Aruban Cayenne flowers, which symbolized the holiday season and Aruba's yellow tropial bird. In Cerro Blanco, the theme was all about Aruban music and the joy of life. It was filled with presents with a large colorful Christmas tree in the center. This was a team effort by the FADA organization and WEMA. Within the next few weeks, the following roundabouts should be inaugurated and they should all be completed by the end of November. Moving forward, to reach the island's goal to become completely sustainable within five years, a plan of action has been put in place to become a greener island. The concept of sustainability was really put to the test when the government constructed the island's first 100% eco-friendly building, which is now known as MFA in North. Although it may seem like just another modern building, MFA North is much more. The architect Orlando Hoovertz tells us a bit more about what makes this building so unique. The main architectural theme for the multifunctional accommodation of North is uh, a so-called tropical roof. What I uh, intended to do was um, make a double roof for which the upper roof is a light uh, sun protective roof and then you have the main building which is the well insulated uh, roof. 
in between you have ventilation that takes away the heat uh, for the building. This upper roof, um, in, in this case, has a dual function. One, it's covered with solar panels, so that generates energy for the building. And secondly, it creates a shadow over the building, so it, heat up, it heats up the building much less than in normal circumstances. This project was carefully planned to make this building as eco-friendly as possible. The architecture kept lighting, irrigation and the wildlife in mind. This is the first governmental building which is 100% sustainable in that sense that we have so many solar panels on that upper roof, a total of 330, and they generate more energy than the building needs, which is approximately 90 uh, kilowatts, and we generate about 100 uh, kilowatt. So that makes it a kind of a unique building here in Aruba. Um, furthermore, uh, we have tried to position the building in such a way on the property that we, that we are maintaining, we have maintained as much uh, local trees as possible, the, the so-called uh, queenie trees. So all the surrounding queenie trees we try to uh, maintain. We even shifted the building five meters to the north to maintain one, build one uh, tree in the middle. Stay with us because we'll be right back with more 15 on 15 after a word from one of our sponsors. After the break, this Texas search party never loses hope. Thank you for staying with us. We all surely remember the young student Natalie Holloway, which disappeared from the island over 10 years ago. Well, a group of volunteers from Texas have still not given up the search. Tim Miller is a Texas resident that founded a search group after his daughter Laura was abducted in North Galveston County in Texas in 1984. Since then, he has helped recover lost planes, ships, and over 300 missing people. One of them that Miller continues to search for, along with his four volunteers, is the young girl Natalie Holloway, which had disappeared in Aruba in 2005 after a night out with her friends. Uh, when I started EquiSearch, I never wanted to start it. Uh, you know, my, my own daughter disappeared. Police said she was a runaway. We couldn't get any help at all. And, uh, it, it was a long, torturous uh, 17 months. Uh, her body was accidentally found uh, two and a half miles from my house. Um, three other girls were found there uh, also. Uh, two of them still unidentified and, uh, and never been to rest. So, uh, again, I remember every minute of that 17 months of the uh, helplessness, hopelessness, and uh, and fear, and, and uh, I just made a promise to God and Lord I'd never leave a family alone if there's anything we could ever do. And, you know, since that time we've been in uh, 38 states, eight different countries, and had a lot of success, learned over the years, got uh, a lot of neat resources, in fact, got more resources than most law enforcement agencies. And uh, we've never uh, charged 10 cents for our services, so, uh, you know, we've been very blessed on bringing closure to families and, uh, and helping law enforcement out uh, when they don't have resources that we may have. Uh, we have found two planes before that, uh, that other people had missed, many, many cars, many drowning victims. And, uh, but we don't get involved unless law enforcement approves us coming in. So it was a family member that called law enforcement. They uh, did some research on us and said, yeah, we can use all the help that we can get right now. And, don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with more 15 on 15 right here on Channel 15 ATV. When we come back, SeaWorld makes a much-awaited announcement. Thank you for staying tuned to 15 on 15. There is big news from SeaWorld today. They plan to eliminate their controversial killer whale show in San Diego. This comes after intensifying criticism over the treatment of killer whales and amidst declining ticket sales. Now company is planning a new approach. Our partners at NBC News have the story for us. SeaWorld's trademark exhibit, The Killer Whale Show, will be phased out next year. The stunning decision comes after years of criticism targeting SeaWorld's treatment of orcas in captivity. The result, declining attendance. Today's show, full of empty seats. The plan going public online to investors. 
we are listening to our guests. We're evolving as a company. We're always changing. SeaWorld may be closing down its Shamu show, but is investing in a new exhibit, what the company calls a more informative, bigger and natural setting for orcas, set to open in 2017. With 24 killer whales in captivity, including parks in Orlando and San Antonio, SeaWorld's announcement is only affecting San Diego's 11 orcas so far. They're an animal that possesses great spiritual power. The critical documentary Blackfish sparked worldwide protest in what some say is the driving force behind today's announcement. I think it's a recognition by SeaWorld they really need to move to a different business model. And I would love to see SeaWorld go beyond this uh, and announce an end to their breeding program. While some call today's announcement a bait and switch, tonight change is in the water for SeaWorld San Diego. While the show as we know it won't go on here, the orcas will stay. Although this will only be taking place at their park in San Diego, it is a big step for the company, which had previously refused to admit any wrongdoing or mistreatment to their killer whales. Thank you so much for watching. These were your local news updates and trending lifestyle topics. Don't forget to like our 15 on 15 Facebook page and Instagram page. Be sure to tune back in to 15 on 15 tomorrow night at 10.15 p.m. right here on Channel 15 ATV. See you then.